after their victory in Vegas, Sean Cunningham, who covers the Sacramento Kings for ABC 10, he joined me before catching a flight back home to Sacramento from Vegas, where he covered the Kings and their entire run to their second summer league championship. And Sean interviewed a ton of players, including Davion Mitchell, Lewis King, uh, Nemias Keita, and he even got to talk to Bobby Jackson. He shares with us what it was like covering the Kings during this run, what he witnessed watching these games in person. And Sean shares with us some unique and interesting information about De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, and Davion Mitchell all having a private workout together. It's all on today's episode of the Locked On Kings podcast. <laughs> It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked On Kings. Hello and welcome into Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and all off season. If you're looking for in-depth analysis, game-by-game breakdowns, highlights, interviews with local and national experts, full coverage of your Sacramento Kings from January all the way through to December, this is the place for you, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I've been a Sacramento sports media member, Sacramento Kings media member for the last seven years. This will be season number eight for me covering the Kings both as an on-air host and multimedia journalist. And I have the pleasure and privilege of being able to work with Sean Cunningham now that I have joined ABC 10, although I am not nearly to Sean's status. The video content that Sean Cunningham provides is better than anybody you're going to get covering the Sacramento Kings. He gets these great interviews, and that was no different with him being, I think, the only main Kings reporter in Vegas for the majority of the time. He wasn't there for every single game, but he did turn around and go back to Vegas after coming home initially once the Kings made the Summer League Championship game. So Sean was there, talked to a ton of players, witnessed a ton of stuff. He's going to share that and then some for you on today's Locked on Kings podcast. The Sacramento Kings are the first team in NBA history to be two-time NBA Summer League champions. And the coverage of the Kings can't get better than what we got from ABC 10's Sean Cunningham, who was on the ground for most, not all, but most of the Kings summer league action in Vegas. Sean, if I'm not mistaken, you were in Vegas for the first few games, came back to Sacramento. Then once you found out they were going to be playing in the championship, you went back to Sin City uh, to catch and cover all of the action. Welcome back to Lockdown Kings, my friend. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. I survived Vegas, um, which is always, you know, something you can check off and be happy about. And uh, yeah, getting ready to get out of here uh, in the next couple hours. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I was down here and got the first two games. I was going to stay for the Friday game, but the way COVID and flights are working these days, I didn't think that when, first of all, no one's going to Sacramento on Friday night. (laughs) So uh, I didn't think I could get a late flight out and just for the, you know, fear that they might cancel that flight. So I missed that game. And I missed the Sunday game. But once we saw it click in, I was like, you know, it's hard to justify not being there. Uh, I actually wasn't there when they won the championship uh, a few years back. Uh, I was there for the like for th- two or three weeks um, because of USA basketball and all that stuff. So I was ready to get out of Vegas and didn't give a damn about the summer league championship. This year was a little bit different. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's rare when you can say summer league is a lot of fun. I encourage everybody to go to abc10.com and also follow Sean Cunningham on, on Twitter at Sean Cunningham because he posts a lot of videos of exclusive interviews that he got with head coach Bobby Jackson. A number of interviews, a couple of interviews with Davion Mitchell. I believe there was one with uh, Nimaeus Keita. Uh, I think you did one from, with Lewis King as well, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, just the amount of interviews that you did. So the first question I have, it's kind of broad, maybe a bit of a cheater question, but all of us got our kind of idea and opinions of this team based off of what we saw from afar. But you being on the ground in the practice facility, talking to these guys, what stood out to you about this summer league team that maybe we missed or couldn't have seen because we weren't there? Yeah. um, I would say probably the thing that sticks out the most for me is, excuse me, is the fact that from top to bottom, 
this team organizationally is just through the just over the moon about Davion Mitchell. And when I was talking to a few scouts and a few agents and front office people from all over the league, I try to stay away from a lot of the media types because, you know, everyone pretty much knows what Davion Mitchell's all about. It's just how can that what will that look like at the next level, especially given his size um, deficiencies, uh, only being about six foot, maybe six one if you're generous. But the guy's a bulldog. I mean, the guy's just so tenacious, and it does translate. And, and maybe there's going to be some shortcomings along the way. But I wanted to hear from NBA types, the people who are like, you know, no, I mean, even Luke Walton, and I don't think he would mind me sharing this conversation privately. I, I, I hate asking people for comps, but I figured since – <laughs> the tragedy of this COVID pandemic situation is we haven't even been able to talk to Luke Walton about the draft picks yet. I mean, how crazy is that? that right. like, that's a real failure. I feel like on the Kings part, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but to that point, he was like, Oh my God, like just raving about him. He says, I, I think he could be Marcus smart. I think he could be a Patrick Beverly. Maybe the offensive game could be better, could be worse, but at, at worst case, you know, he's going to be on that elite level of defense. And then you see what he goes and does against James Booknight. And the thing that really floored me is talking to Davion after that game, he had never played against book night before, literally watched film the night before, uh, you know, had some scouting and game plan. I mean, the guy is just an overworker. I mean, they've got to really hold him out of the gym sometimes. And he said, it's even at his detriment. He's got to be careful with that. And you can see it. Like he wasn't completely healthy throughout this, you know, summer league. I mean, the guy was banged up. The guy had a hip problem. I mean, he could see it when he walked, um, so that's something that's going to give you a little bit of pause. But no, from top to bottom, these guys are absolutely through the moon about what he adds to the team. And it's not the fact you don't have to bring in a guy and watch him develop in season much. I mean, this guy's ready to play right now. It'll be fun to hear from Coach Walton and the rest of the coaching staff when we actually get to training camp in the regular season. Who spends more time in the film room, Tyrese Halliburton or Davion Mitchell or, or maybe somebody else? That's going to be on that Kings roster. But Sean, there was a play that stood out to me uh, of Davion Mitchell's in the championship game last night. He was guarding Peyton Pritchard and we know what Pritchard, uh, how he gave Pritchard the off night appropriate nickname there. Uh, but what caught my attention was his on ball defense sparked a reaction from the Kings bench. The kind of reaction that you normally see on the offensive side of the ball when you hit a nasty step back three off a crossover or, or dunk. That kind of reaction is what Mitchell got for just fighting through a screen and staying in front of Pritchard and forcing him to give up the basketball. And that to me, that fired off an idea in my brain of yes, the way Davion Mitchell plays is going to be contagious. It, it, t players, teammates are going to want to match the energy that he plays with. And that excites me for when he gets to the main roster. I can't imagine how he and De'Aaron Fox are going to make each other better, how he and Tyrese Halliburton are going to make each other better. And really, uh, maybe you can provide your perspective better than I can actually being there, but watching Davion Mitchell play, it seems like everybody around him wants to try and match. Even if they can't, they want to try. Yeah, I, I saw that same play, saw the same reaction, and I think it reminded me of what he did against James Booknight in front of the bench uh, in that first game. And and the thing that even was even – it wasn't just the, the players on the bench. I mean, look, the majority of that building was either impartial viewers of, of watching the, the Summer League Championship or they were Celtics fans because there's a lot of Celtics fans that kind of travel and, you know, they're everywhere. So um, the whole arena just – when's the last time you see oohs and ahs based off of a – somebody just sticking their guy. And, and I, I think I tweeted something there last night about the way he fights through a screen, always going over the top, never, never sagging below the, the, the guy, the, the person setting the pick. And it's just so fun to watch, man. Like the guy defensively is just, I mean, you get it, you, you get it right away. You'll see what all, what's all about. And I just, I can't help but going back to that moment in golden one center when Franz Wagner gets drafted by Orlando and the, and the whole arena applause, I mean, they're like, yeah, we didn't want Wagner. And then all of a sudden that leave, that opens the door and they can have book night. And I'm not saying that this is like, you know, that they're justified in this, but when they didn't take book night and they go with Davion Mitchell, and then there's just this confused look that just on everyone's face in the arena. Um, it, it's fun to marriage that to what we're seeing right now. And mm -hmm. just the, 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 the surprise of them, people really getting behind it. And this guy looking like he could be a, a, a contributor, much like Tyrese Halliburton was last year. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's infectious. I mean, and he's not alone. I mean, look at this team that was kind of assembled. And again, you mentioned Lewis King a few minutes ago, a, a Kings two-way player. 
he's really opened some eyes. He takes home that MVP award last night, and that guy comes away with five steals. We're talking about defense. And, look, Davion's on his guy. He's disrupting. He's so disruptive. He's causing all these turnovers. Lewis, King's comes away, Lewis King comes away with five steals in that game. Uh, just a long body, great handles, has an has a ability to both defend and, and, and score as well. So, yeah, there's a lot to there's a lot to like. Even Jemias Ramsey, I mean, was a huge contributor last night on the defensive end to force as many turnovers as they did. I don't think anyone saw that coming. I was sitting by Gary Washburn of the Boston Globe, who, who you know covers the Celtics, and him and Mark Spears were both sitting there. And I think they were anticipated. They were dumbfounded by halftime. To, I mean, to, I think everyone saw when when the Celtics jumped out to that lead. And they were like, okay, this is about how it's going to go. And all of a sudden, it just turns on its head, and the Kings come away with a with a lead at the end of one. Um, it was pretty special, man. To force that many turnovers at halftime again, I don't want to overact. It's 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 summer league, but there's a lot to like there, man. There really is. Yeah, it's easy to overreact to stuff like this, and I've always wanted to try and stay even keeled with things. I'm glad you brought up. Uh, Davion Mitchell, the reaction to Davion Mitchell on draft night, because I've already spoken openly about it. I was against the pick. I didn't understand it. I didn't like it at first either. And that reaction is available on YouTube for you to see the confusion on my face and my disappointment with the Kings not going with a wing. So I'm glad to be proven wrong this quickly by Davion Mitchell to the point uh, where so far, so, so far, right? Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> to the point where I'm excited to see what he can do with the main roster. And, and I believe what he provides is exactly what the Sacramento Kings needs. Uh, even if he didn't necessarily fill a position of need or a wing position, so to say. But you were talking about the defense from the Kings in that game. I mean, they forced 25 turnovers, had 14 steals. It's crazy that Lewis King had five of them, scored 36 points off of those turnovers. And I wanted to ask you and get your opinion on Bobby Jackson. You've known Bobby for a very long time. This is his first shot as a head coach. Uh, He'll be the head coach of the Stockton Kings this year uh, as well. And he wins a championship. And I didn't mean to undermine him, but early on in summer league, I was saying, I didn't know how much credit to get Bobby or to give Bobby for how this team was playing the energy and hustle that they were playing with. Cause I saw a roster of a bunch of players who are NBA hopefuls, right? They're hoping to make a roster or earn a training camp invite. So of course they're going to play hard. They know if they're not playing hard, if they don't give it their all, they're not going to impress everybody. But now that I, I mean, I, there's still that, and I still agree with that or believe that. But at the same time, too, it seemed like Bobby Jackson got this team, one, to play well together very quickly, and two, to completely buy in uh, to what the Sacramento Kings were trying to do defensively. And Bobby even said, I think at one point, that he was taking instructions or trying to implement things that they wanted to implement on the main roster, was in constant communication with Luke Walton, which is great. Uh, but I'm not giving Walton that credit. I'm giving that credit to Bobby Jackson. What do you think about his performance so far in his first head coaching game? Well, there's a lot to like. I mean, I like the fact he challenged the team after the first two games in Sacramento. Uh, they go 0-2, and, and he's calling them, we wanted to be the Harlem Globetrotters or something like that. And, um, you know, I think that kind of stuck with some guys. And, and when you've got a guy like Davion Mitchell, who's the head of the snake and, and really – Maybe I mean maybe he didn't quite know everyone yet. He wasn't as vocal. He was. If you compare and contrast those first two games to these last two games here in Vegas, I mean it's night and day. The way the guy was communicating, he's directing people where to be on the floor. He wasn't doing that so much in those first few games, and the spacing wasn't as good in those first two games in Sacramento. So um, now that you know guys understand tendencies a little bit more, they have a little bit of chemistry. They've spent some time together. I mean everything. They were drafted one week, and the next week they're playing summer league games. So. It, it comes at you really, really quickly. And, you know, the thing that I think was impressive about Bobby, he called it out. Um, he knew that this is, look, he, everyone recognizes summer league is beyond wins and losses, even coaches, but coaches still, they're going to want absolute wins and losses because that's, 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 that's the thing that they take with them. So um, to see the turnaround, and I think they benefited a lot from that week, almost a week, full week off, from that lap, from the Tuesday or Wednesday game in Sacramento to that first game in Vegas, which was a which was Monday, um, you had almost a week to work in Vegas and kind of get to know each other. And I think Bobby, first and foremost, not only called him out and challenged him, but he kept things rather loose. And I don't know if I mean I think people probably saw on social media that you know the day before the championship game, um, they 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 took the day off. There was some meetings, but Bobby got the hell out of town. He had his golf tournament here in in Dixon, I believe, near Sacramento, and. Um, he got to play in his tournament. I talked, I was like, saw him at shoot around the next morning. He's like, no, we need to get our guys some rest. I mean, it's, we've been pretty much every single day. The only day that they had had completely off was uh, the Wednesday after the Vegas back to back on Monday and Tuesday. So um, to have only those two days off in Vegas, I think was really, really good. And and I was even a little questioning. I was like, well, are you guys really going to take this seriously going into, 
to the championship game. You already know you don't have Chemezi Metu. How does that disrupt what you're trying to do? And uh, they responded really well. And so not only did they respond well without Chemezi, who, you know, that might not sound like a big absence uh, in terms of what fans know is what Sacramento Kings do and him being like maybe the 10th guy on the team, 11th guy, maybe. Um, but he was pretty instrumental early on in these games. And he was a big factor, a big piece. You noticed him on the floor. Uh, they relied on him. He was a solid defender. And when they lost him, I'm like thinking to myself, how, how are you going to adjust this? Because, you know, you don't really have a lot of, and, and you saw what Emmanuel Terry was able to come in and provide. And Emmanuel Terry was a spark throughout the entire summer league. I think Jason Jones stole my thunder a little bit when he said that he's like, man, it's hard not to see him and think about the energy that Rashawn Holmes brings in night in and night out. So yeah, um, I give Bobby a lot of credit. I know he's wearing this like a badge of honor. Uh, he's very proud of it. And to see him and Paul Johnson, the Stockton uh, Kings GM, this is a hell of a building point for them to go into next season and think of it. They're going to have, you know, Lewis Kings, Lewis King and uh, uh, Namias Keita in Stockton as Kings two-way players and probably several other of these guys on this roster on the Stockton Kings. So uh, what a building block for him. I think this is a big feather in the cap and, you know, for him to take over his first time as a head coach, uh, I think he should be absolutely proud of this. And, and if there was anyone that thought that maybe Bobby Jackson, Oh, that's cute. And maybe, you know, whatever, like maybe dismissive of him as being a legit head coach in this league, this might've opened some eyes a little bit. I think today's episode of locked on Kings is brought to you by sweat block, sweat block, the antiperspirant wipes that work better than anything else out there. And in fact, they come with some significant guarantees. First off, they're doctor created and doctor recommended, and they work for up to seven days per use. Meaning you don't just blow through a box in a week and are forced to buy another one that quickly. They give you a dry shirt guarantee. So not only do they last a long time, if they do not meet that, that dry shirt guarantee, you will get your money back. That is a sweat block guaranteed. It's been featured and tested by firefighters. So if it works for them, it will work for you. It's a bestseller on Amazon for the past 10 years, has over 13,000 reviews. You should go and read and check out. Don't just take my word for it. Hear from a bunch of customers. I too am a customer. I use sweat block. It has worked perfectly for me 100% of the time. Also, it's manufactured in the USA. And sweat block is really easy to get. You can get it on Amazon, like I mentioned. You can get it at your local CVS pharmacy, but I recommend going to sweatblock.com to get it because if you use promo code locked on at checkout, you'll get 20% off. We'll help you save money, and Sweatblock will help you save yourself from those nasty sweat stains and the embarrassment of that. Just make sure you're using Sweatblock. You won't be disappointed. Today's Locked on Kings podcast is also brought to you by Theragun. Just don't let the stress of daily life weigh on your body. Whether you're an elite athlete or someone like me who's just trying to make it through the day tension-free, Theragun can help you. Theragun is handled, or it's a handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power, and it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. The Gen 4 Theragun doesn't just feel good, it gets to the source of the pain by releasing tension using Theragun's signature percussive therapy, which goes 60% deeper than vibration alone. I use it for my shoulders after a long day at work, and I have an eight-month pregnant uh, wife at home right now. She absolutely loves this thing. I use it on her feet, use it on her legs, use it on her lower back. With all that baby weight she's carrying, she needs Theragun. We wouldn't have made it through pregnancy, quite honestly, without Theragun. So make sure you go and give it a try. You can try Theragun for 30 days starting at only $199. Go to therabody.com slash locked on right now and you can get a Gen 4 Theragun today. Again, that's therabody, all one word, dot com slash locked on. Therabody.com slash locked on. I have a couple more for you. The first one is uh, talking about Emmanuel Terry. He impressed me really from the get-go at the California Classic, but how consistent he was with that energy that he provided. And, and Kings fans respond to that and recognize and see that kind of stuff very quickly. So I said, I mean, selfishly, I want Emmanuel Terry uh, to remain in the Kings organization and play for the Stockton Kings just so he's not playing anywhere else. But I honestly feel like Terry earned a training camp invite. I don't know if that will come from the Sacramento Kings just because of how busy their front court is. And in reality, even if he did get a Kings training camp invite, he knows that he's essentially just getting reps. The, the likelihood of him making the roster in Sacramento just is very low. So I wouldn't hate honestly seeing Emmanuel Terry get an invite from another organization just for him to get rewarded for the way that he played. Uh, so I was curious 
your opinions on Emmanuel Terry's possibility of playing at the next level. I mean, again, summer league versus the actual NBA, very big difference, but also more importantly, the play of Jemias Ramsey, who you brought up, the play of Lewis King, uh, Jemias Kata, I believe King and Kata are both on uh, two-way contracts. What is the likelihood of those three names in your mind getting opportunity, getting some run with the main roster, especially Jemias Ramsey, who's, who's under contract? Well, I, I do. Well, again, we still have a whole lot, a lot of off season left. Um, you know, all of a sudden Lewis King might look like a, a chip, a more attractive trade piece than he did uh, two weeks ago. Mm. Um, but I'll start there, I guess, because I think he's the one that probably has realistically the most, um, the biggest chance of, of, of seeing some action depending upon what is on this team. And just because of the ball handling and the, and the, just him, he's really just a really long guard. And so uh, I, I could see it. He, he obviously had some per, uh, perimeter shooting that has definitely improved. I mean, this guy, everyone's known the talent um, with Lewis King. I mean, if you just know his story, um, it, 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 they're actually quite lucky to have him. It could be, it's a very low risk, high reward situation where I think could, could really play into being a rotational player, uh, maybe even bigger than that down the road. But uh, I like the fact that he's, he's under contract. So he'll be here. Um, Nem- Nemias is going to be a little bit, I, he's not so much a project, but he's going to need he's going to need some time to season for sure. Uh, G League, obviously, he'll get a ton of reps there. I don't know that we'll see him a ton in Sacramento. Probably not much at all, especially this coming season. That's at least if I was a gambling man, that's what I would pick. Uh, Jemias is a guy where I don't know because I know they're high on him, um, but I, you know, and I know technically with the way the roster is now, sure you could see some moments where where he might come in. I think the preseason and training camp is going to be so big for him. Mm. Um, but I don't think if you're, if you're a Kings fan and you're not seeing much of him this year, um, I don't think that that's a, so much of a bad thing. Uh, I, he's just so young. And so you're still going to have to bring him along. Um, you know, the guy, I think the one thing, one of the things is like Robert Woodard, for example, I don't know that he necessarily impressed anybody. Um, the guy looks more like a football player than a basketball player to me, but uh, he's done some nice things. I just think really offensively he's, very very far away um doesn't really have a great outside shot uh but but just one of the most athletic people you'll see so um hopefully they can get him to the g league i don't really know what that looks like i don't think there's a big future there for him in sacramento but then back to your original question about emmanuel terry like yeah i think i think he's opened up some eyes i think he'll probably get a training camp invite with any team if it's not the kings and I think G League is his future, and and we know there's so many success stories in the G League. And when you play the way he does, uh, I think that bodes well for for a lot of teams. And he could he could be one of those Gabe Vincent type stories that, that gets called up and all of a sudden becomes an important piece to a franchise. So uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I just don't know that it'll be in Sacramento. Uh, but you know, shoot, we still have so much off season left. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm still expecting trades, and and I know they're trying to be aggressive. And I think really really what it is, is, is if people are frustrated, there's no trades. It's like, I think you get to summer leagues, things start to free agencies kind of tapered off a little bit. And now you're really at a point where um, teams know what they have. Teams know what they're looking for. They might get a little bit more desperate. Maybe the asking price for certain things aren't as big as they once were. And I mean, if you're Sacramento and you've knocked on the doors of so many teams and been shoot away, um, maybe you, you retest some of those doors and see if anything might be a little bit more, uh, welcoming and warm and maybe there's something that can be worked out but if this is the team going into uh, the offseason I mean they still were about six and a half under the cap they still have their mid-level exception um, not a whole lot of talent still remains in terms of you know free agency but there could be some some possibilities out there but I think it's going to be a pretty busy couple of months even though you only really have a month off before training camp opens Final thing I have for you. We saw videos of Tyrese Halliburton in Vegas working uh, with Davion Mitchell and some of the other summer league players. Did you notice any other Kings from the main roster, not just in uh, Sacramento or rather Vegas to support the Sacramento Kings, but also maybe getting involved in workouts and, and getting some early run with some of these young guys? Yeah, well, not so much workouts. I mean, Tyrese has been around this team uh, the entire time. He's the one that's been, and, and really he's supposed to be, even though he was that rookie um, the only thing that he gets excluded from is really uh, playing with the team because yeah. of the amount of minutes that he had. He wasn't like a Peyton Pritchard, as you mentioned earlier with Boston, who, you know, didn't have a whole lot of playing time and really needs a lot more of this summer league stuff. So 
But no, having Tyrese around the team, the workouts were incredible. They weren't even just team workouts. He went over to Impact on his own, took, uh, I think it was uh, Chemezi Metu and obviously Davion Mitchell, and they just put on a show at, at, at Impact. So uh, that was incredible to see. Uh, I love talking to both of them uh, individually about one another, especially how, you know, Davion and Tyrese remember the, mm -hmm. the matchup that the mm -hmm. two of them had two times in college and um, you just what stands out between the two of them and, and Davion being so comp complimentary of Tyrese's basketball IQ and you can tell that basketball IQ is a big thing to Davion Mitchell because he's in the ear of so many guys I mean you, you, there's a moment last night that I, I'm thinking about in the first I think it was in the first half where he pulls Kata aside and he's telling you know you need to be here it's like you got this six foot nothing guy and this seven footer and he's just telling him, no, you need to be here. You need to be here. You need to come here. This is why you got a foul. And it, and it was just, it was just so fun to watch. And then, you know, yeah, to, to the other Kings are in town. I mean, obviously buddy healed has been here. Terrence Davis has been here. Um, I haven't seen any of those guys. Usually you won't see a lot of vets work out with these summer league rosters. Um, Alex Len came in and got some business out of the way and um, was able to be around the team. Rashawn Holmes was supposed to be. In fact, we were going to have his press conference uh, here in here in Vegas, and uh, I think something got disrupted along the way. But one of the things that my ears immediately perked up to was when, you know, obviously, look, the main story here will be Davion Mitchell, but it's also, oh, by the way, how does this look with De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Alliburton? Mm. And in talking to Tyrese, he was he un, he revealed that the three of them had had a workout together, and I think I think that is something that would catch most people off guard. It certainly did me, but it's but it was nice to see that because. You know, Davion's talked about he doesn't really have time to get to know if a lot of these guys or pick their brain yet because everything's just been so, you know, bang, bang, bang. But to see that moment, you know, that certainly goes a long way in, in, in not only ushering a new guy in, but you've got last year's rookie who also you've got three straight three point guards here that are all talented and bring their own thing. And I, one of the things I think it'll be so much fun about um, seeing those three on the roster is how much each of them will push De'Aaron Fox because, mm -hmm. you know, De'Aaron has I'm not going to say a lazy fair attitude because he's super competitive but he also doesn't need to get in the face of anybody. And if he's got someone like Davion Mitchell, who's not afraid to step to a guy and tell him what to do, that's great because each person, it's each personality is different. You know, each guy brings their own thing to the table. So uh, I, I think each person will be able to challenge each guy. And, and if they're, you know, three guard lineups are a thing in the NBA. So I think we're going to see a lot of it. I can't wait. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I, and, you know, we still have buddy healed on this roster. So don't forget him. I mean, you got, you got these, these four guards that are going to be shifting around so much, uh, it, it's going to be fun. And I think Davion, if Buddy Hill's on this roster, Davion will be very good for him. Today's Locked on Kings podcast, as always, brought to you by our friends over at Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. The protein bar that tastes like a candy bar and the snack that gets me through the day, especially when I have just those munchies. I'm not really wanting to eat a full meal, but I need something to get me through. Built Bar is perfect. Now, on top of being delicious, it literally tastes like I'm eating a candy bar. It is healthy for you. They come in a bunch of wonderful flavors. My favorite is mint brownie. Also, uh, flavors like coconut, raspberry, double chocolate, strawberry cookies and cream, German chocolate, and more. And on top of being delicious, these bars are healthy for you. 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180, or only four to five grams of net sugar, and only four to five grams of net carbs. And what I encourage you to do is go to built.com and buy a mixed box. They'll send you a bunch of different flavors for you to try. And then once you've picked your favorites, you can go back to built.com and build your own box, order the flavors that you want sent directly to you. And when you do order on built.com, make sure you use promo code locked on. You'll get 15% off your order. Again, it's promo code locked on for 15% off at built.com. And Locked On Kings is brought to you by BetOnline.ag, the official sports gambling partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action with baseball season in full swing, the NFL preseason about to begin, plus all your golf, UFC action, fun prop bets, and more. Uh, BetOnline is the best place to track all the action to get your gambling on to play fun games and you'll be get the best odds. Plus, they offer great deals. Like, for example, when you sign up for the first time, you'll get a 50% welcome bonus all you have to do to get this free money is just type in promo code locked on l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n all one word and check this out 
Not only will we help you earn some free money with that or get some free money with that promo code, we'll also help you make money with that free money by listening to the Locked On Bets podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, a free resource to help you cash in on Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Huge thank you to Sean Cunningham for joining me here on the Locked On Kings podcast. Always a pleasure to have him on, and he does such a phenomenal job covering the Sacramento Kings normally, but did an excellent job uh, covering them. Uh, in Las Vegas. You can go to abc10.com or find him on Twitter at Sean Cunningham. You can see all of his great work, all of the interviews that we alluded to in our conversation. Go and check them out. Some great information from him about how much the Sacramento Kings love Davion Mitchell. It, it was great to hear Luke Walton's thoughts on Davion Mitchell, although unofficial, but in a conversation between he and Sean. And at the very end there, I thought it was really interesting that uh, De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, Davion Mitchell, they're already working out together. They're trying to find a way to make that three guard lineup work. And I certainly hope it works because if it does, man, the Kings, that lineup is going to be tough for anybody in the league to play against. I did want to mention and talk about one thing before we go. A, a lot of people have been talking on social media about the SB Nation article that ranked the top, I think, 13 rookie performances in the summer league and somehow they left Davion Mitchell off of this list. I'm not going to bag on SB Nation. I already kind of did on social media. A lot of people have done on social media about questioning whether or not they even watched Davion Mitchell play or they made this list without really watching that much summer league action. How in the world uh, could the uh, co-MVP of the summer league not be on this list in Davion Mitchell? I get it. I'm not going to bag on them for that. Enough has already been said there. What I do want to say, though, is that this doesn't surprise me because a lot of the reasoning for SB Nation's list and who they put on this list were numbers-based, stats-based, but offensive stats, scoring numbers, shooting numbers, true shooting percentage. And that, to me, is a perfect example of where we are in the NBA right now how offense is so much more important than defense and is is embellished and praised and highlighted so much more than defense is. So much so that it's rare that you get players like Davion Mitchell, players that good who have made a name for themselves on the defensive end of the floor. Davion can also score. He can also shoot the three. We know that he can get buckets. Scoring is not a problem for the Sacramento Kings team. Defense is. And there are so many players that make all their money, get paid, and make a name for themselves just by playing on the offensive end of the floor and then giving a half-ass effort on defense. Talking about you, James Harden, right? So part of it, part of the reason why that exists is because of how we as fans, we as the media, only focus on the offense, only focus on the scoring numbers. And of course, scoring is going to be the most exciting, the most important stat in basketball. You have to score to win, right? But defense is also incredibly important. And I think we need to all do a better job, not just us in Sacramento now that Davion Mitchell is here, but covering and focusing on the defensive successes of players, even non-superstars, players that fight hard on the defensive end of the floor. And I know Marcus Smart has been praised for that. Good, continue that. I know Patrick Beverly is not the most likable guy in the league. He has no problem taking on the villain mantra, but Patrick Beverly plays with a tenacity and aggressiveness on defense. That needs to be focused on more and praised more at least in my opinion. If that were the case, I think we'd get more defenders and more players wanting to give their all on the defensive end of the floor like Davion Mitchell does. So that's really all I wanted to say about that. But if you have your opinions on my conversation with Sean Cunningham on that SB Nation article, anything Sacramento Kings, please send them to me at Matt George Sack on Twitter. That's S-A-C uh, on Twitter. You can also email me, Sports at gmail.com. Uh, and uh, feel free to leave uh, comments down below uh, if you are watching on YouTube. That'll do it for today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast. I'm working on trying to get CBS Sports draft analyst Kyle Boone, who I had on uh, a little over a month ago before the draft, or maybe a couple of months ago now. Uh, I'm trying to have him back on to talk about the selection of Davion Mitchell, get his thoughts uh, on draft night for the Sacramento Kings. Uh, so hopefully he will join me for that. Plus I have more great content coming. Uh, so make sure you keep an eye out for that and an ear to the ground for that as well. Thank you so much for listening to Locked on Kings. As always, I appreciate you. Uh, take care of yourself and I'll talk to you on the next one. Until then, my name is Matt George. You have been listening to the Locked on Kings podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network.